What's up guys, it's Chris Majestic and today we're looking at what just might be the best laser TV so far, which is the Hisense L9G. So with the slew of ultra short throw projectors or laser TVs popping up over the past two years, it's been interesting seeing all these brands battle it out. So a few months ago, I reviewed the Hisense L5, which is a 4K laser TV that was released in 2020. Well, the Hisense L9G is a step up from the L5 and brings quite a bit more to the table. So like the L5, the L9G uses a fixed focus, so you have to choose between a 100-inch screen or a 120-inch screen. The 100-inch version retails for $5,500 and the 120-inch version retails for $6,000. And at the time I'm shooting this video, Hisense is offering a 100-day guarantee where you can buy the projector, try it out, and if you hate it, you can send it back. So as I said, those prices include a 100 or 120 inch screen. And if you go with the 100 inch option, you can choose between an ambient light rejecting daylight screen or an ALR cinema screen. Now, even with the screen being included, $5,500 is still a pretty hefty price tag, but Hisense is aiming for the top spot competing with the Samsung LSP9T and the LG HU85LA, which also retail for about the same price. Either way, it's a pretty tall order, so we'll have to to see how it stacks up. So in the box, you get a pair of white gloves, documentation, a smart voice remote since it runs Android TV, a power cord, a cleaning kit, and of course the projector itself. And it looks like the L9G has a slightly different design from the L5, which is a bit more rounded. I like the fact that it's black and doesn't stand out too much. You'll notice that it has a gloss black top and on that gloss top is a pretty cool glittery design. The front has a mesh cover that hides a pair of 40 watt speakers that Hisense calls their Dolby Atmos sound. The power button is hidden on the lower front side. There's a USB port hidden on the bottom left side. It has adjustable feet on the bottom that you'll use to aim it on the screen and of course the ports are on the back. You get a coax input since it has a built-in TV tuner, an ethernet port, digital and analog audio outputs, two HDMI 2.1 ports which support 4K and 120 hertz as well as eARC, a third HDMI 2.0 port, and a USB port. So Hisense packed quite a bit into this projector. As you saw, it has two HDMI 2.1 ports and it supports 4K and 120 hertz, which is a pretty big deal. It has a trichroma laser engine, which produces 3000 lumens and covers 107% of Rec 2020 without the use of a color wheel. It has a 4K native resolution using a 0.47 inch DLP chip. It supports HDR10 as well as HLG. It has WISA support, which allows you to connect wireless speakers a built-in TV tuner, and it runs on full Android TV OS, so you get access to tons of apps without the need to buy a separate streamer. It also has a 0.25 to 1 throw ratio, which produces a 100-inch screen from about 11 inches away. Now, it's important to note that the L9G doesn't have a manual focus, so if you buy the 100 L9G, the focus is hard set to 100 inches, and the 120 L9G is set to 120 inches. So as I mentioned earlier, the 100 inch version of the L9G comes with either a daylight or a cinema screen, and the 120 inch version is only available with the cinema screen. The daylight screen is what's known as a Fresnel screen, and the cinema screen is a lenticular screen. Now most of the ALR screens that we've seen out there are lenticular. They block light from above and absorb light from below and reflect it back to the viewer. Well, Fresnel screens have curved ridges that are optimized for ultra short throw projectors, which allows them to block ambient light from multiple directions and reflect the light from the projector back to the viewer. These screens work okay in a room with a lot of ambient light, but the downside is that they have a narrow viewing angle with the L9G's daylight screen having a viewing angle of just 36 degrees. So if you plan on viewing the screen from an angle, you may need to go with the soft cinema screen versus the hard daylight screen. Now, in an effort to get this video out as soon as possible, I had Hisense send this out without a screen, and I'll do another video when the L9G Cinema screen arrives. But the screen that I'll be using in the video today is the lenticular ARLR screen that came with the Hisense L5. Now, I'm not sure if this is the same exact lenticular option that you can get with the L9G, but it's worked great for pretty much every ultra short throw that I've used with it. 
And when it comes to installation, it varies depending on which screen you go with, but aside from the screen assembly, you have to make sure your measurements are exact, especially since the L9G doesn't have a zoom or manual focus. Hisense gives you the exact dimensions of everything, but depending on the height of your ceilings, you may have to sit the projector on a really short stand. For the 100 inch version, there was an eight inch gap between the top of the projector and the bottom of the screen. So make sure you take this into account when measuring. And as I mentioned earlier, it needs to be about 11 inches away from the screen to produce a hundred inch image. So you have to make sure that you have a pretty deep stand or you'll have to pull the stand farther away from the wall. So here you can see I'm using the Besta cabinet from Ikea and I had to pull it about nine inches away from the wall for the 100 inch screen. So even though it's not as bad as some other ultra short throws I've seen out there, it does need a good amount of space. So as I mentioned, the L9G runs Android TV, which is one of my favorite operating systems. You get access to Disney+, Plus, YouTube, Hulu, HBO Now, Prime, and a bunch of other apps, even though it is missing Netflix. Now, like I've said in other projected reviews, I'm not sure why Netflix seems to be hit or miss with certain models, but if you want Netflix, you can always connect a separate streaming device. And the L9G flies through the Android TV interface with no lag, and the voice remote works great allowing me to search for apps and TV shows using the Google Assistant. It even has Alexa support as well as Control 4 compatibility so you can integrate it into any smart home. All right, so now onto image quality, and I'll be 100% honest with you. As soon as I turned this projector on, my jaw dropped to the floor. I couldn't believe how bright and vibrant the image was from this thing. And not only was the image super bright from this projector, but the colors look amazing. Here you can see how it looks in my living room, which is almost like a torture test. I have a total of five large windows that all shine right on the screen. And as you can see, the L9G still looks great, even without the daylight screen. Aside from brightness, the L9G also has fantastic sharpness and focus uniformity. Even though it's using pixel shifting to display a 4K image, there's no doubt that I'm seeing 8 million pixels on the screen. I mentioned this in the Hisense L5 review, but one of the upsides to a projector having a fixed focus is that it has fantastic focus uniformity. And the L9G is one of the few projectors that doesn't look bad in vivid mode. It does add quite a bit of color saturation to the image, but in a bright room, I actually like it. I found myself using standard and theater day modes the most since I prefer a more accurate image, but you can't really go wrong with any of the image presets. And watching football over the past week or so as well as random SDR content has been fantastic on this projector. And my wife and daughter who've been complaining about other laser TVs had nothing bad to say about this one. All right, so SDR content looks good, but HDR also looks great. Thanks to the 3000 lumen rating, it still produces a nice bright HDR image, unlike a lot of the competing laser TVs. In HDR standard mode, the colors are rich and vibrant and not overly dramatic. And if you prefer an even flatter image, then the HDR theater mode might suit you even better. And that's the thing I like about this projector. Not only does it have a ton of calibration options, but the preset modes and settings work really well, and you can tell that Hisense spent some time optimizing these settings. I know it probably sounds like I'm being paid by Hisense, but I promise you that I'm being 100% honest, it really does look fantastic. Now notice I said fantastic, but I didn't say perfect. One of the places this projector lacks is black levels, so dark scenes are definitely gonna look dark gray. I tried turning down the laser luminance and adjusting the brightness and contrast and nothing seems to help. Now, as much as I found this disappointing, I kind of expected it considering it's difficult to balance high brightness with deep blacks. I do have to admit that this makes the image amazing during the day, but pretty mediocre when watching dark movies at night. All right, so now on to one of my favorite things about this projector, which is its gaming performance. So this is the first projector I've reviewed on a channel that supports 4K at 120 frames per second. This alone would make this projector a popular option for gamers. Not only does it support 4K at 120, but it also has pretty good input lag. With the projector in game mode, I measured the input lag at approximately 35 milliseconds with 1080p and 32 milliseconds with 4K at 60 hertz. And even though I don't have a way to test 4K at 120 hertz input lag with my tester, your input lag is cut in half when the refresh rate doubles. This means you could have an input lag of about 16 milliseconds if you have a console that supports 4K at 120. This is a pretty big deal when you consider the brightness of this projector and mixed with HDMI 2.1, this might just be the best laser TV for gaming. 
All right, so how about the speakers? Well, at first I thought it was a bit gimmicky for them to call the 40 watt internal speakers Dolby Atmos speakers, but as soon as I threw on a movie, it totally made sense. I don't know if I just have the perfect room for these speakers or what, but this is the most immersive speaker setup that I've heard from a projector. The only thing that was missing was bass, but it does have an audio output which can be used to connect a subwoofer. And another thing that really makes this projector unique is if it doesn't already have enough features is that it also has WISA support built in. And if you've never heard of it, WISA stands for Wireless Speaker and Audio Association and it allows you to send high quality audio wirelessly to WISA enabled speakers. And even though I never had a chance to review them, I do want to thank Keith from the WISA Association for sending out the Platon Monaco 5.1 speaker system. He sent these speakers out to me quite a while ago and I figured this was the perfect opportunity to test them out. So the Platon Monaco 5.1 is a WISA enabled compact speaker system that sounds absolutely fantastic for its size and it works perfectly with an Xbox or a TV or projector that's equipped with WISA. All you do is plug in the speaker transmitter into a USB port on the TV and the speakers connect wirelessly to the system. I was able to get the system unboxed and set up with the L9G in just a few minutes and it works great. So if you're not looking for huge speakers in your room but you want a great sounding system, this is a great option and I'll put a link in the video description for anyone who is interested. And the last sound related feature I want to talk about is eARC. So with the inclusion of HDMI 2.1 comes eARC, which allows you to send high fidelity audio formats such as Dolby Atmos from the projector's built-in apps to your home theater receiver or soundbar. This is another feature that makes the L9G stand apart from the competition and makes for an even better experience when using the native Android TV apps. And when it comes to fan noise, I didn't find the noise from the L9G to be a problem. On some super bright scenes, you might hear the fans ramp up for about two or three seconds, but it doesn't last long. So overall, the Hisense L9G is a fantastic projector that offers quite a lot. It does have a pretty hefty price tag, but I think the price is at least partially warranted considering how many features they crammed into it. It's super bright, has great color accuracy, low input lag, it supports 4K at 120, it has great speakers, eARC, WISA compatibility, and a nice design. There are only two things I can nitpick about it, and that's the black levels and throw ratio. Okay, so how does this stack up against the competition? Well, I'm still testing the Samsung LSP9T, and even though it's a really close matchup, I think the Hisense might slightly beat out the Samsung. The Samsung does have a much better throw ratio and better black levels, but it's not as bright, and the Hisense beats it out on features. But I do have to do some more side-by-side -side testing before I can crown one over the other. So what about last year's winner for best ultra short throw, which was the LG HU85 LA? Well, with the tri-chroma laser light source, great brightness and focus uniformity, I can safely say that the L9G beats out the LG. And the more I think about it, the more I'm thinking that I may have to do a head-to-head -head comparison between the L9G and the Samsung LSP9T. So let me know what you think in the comment section if you want to see that. But either way, the Samsung is next up on my list for me to review, as well as the Viva Chroma. Now, I've actually been testing the pre-production version of the Chroma for the past week or so, and I actually planned on uploading a video this past weekend, but Viva is already shipping out a new and improved version of the Chroma, so I'll have to hold my thoughts until I can check out the new version. So if you haven't already, go ahead and make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that bell icon so you don't miss any of these upcoming videos. And if you found this video helpful, don't forget to mash that like button for me. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video.